1980, I came here after graduating from college, uh, and I came to go to art school after university in Virginia. I majored in French and studio art, and then I came here to go to the École des Beaux-Arts in Paris. Interested in history and architecture, and that's one of the reasons I'm fascinated with France and, and Europe in general. Is that's, uh, that was the attraction uh, as a student coming here and learning. Okay, well that's, that's the problem with being an art student and you have lots of interests. Uh, I used my creative skills that I learned in art school with, with uh, being an entrepreneur is a very creative thing. You have to create everything from scratch. So you're having to uh, create your packaging, create uh, all kinds of uh, things that don't exist. Uh, and so you're actually creating a company from nothing. So if you're not creative, it's not a good idea to be an entrepreneur because you have to constantly think on your feet and come up with new ideas and create a product line and uh, I was in the food business so I created a line of, uh, of uh, food products with packaging and, and uh, things like that. So that was, uh, that's what took me away from art. It was just too much not satisfying. So I decided I would find a way to get back to what I came to France for in the first place, which getting back to enjoying the, the, the history and the architecture and the beauty, the, the art itself. So I became a, a guide for antique dealers coming from the United States mainly, but Australia as well, uh, taking people on antique buying tours, taking buying furnishings or actually antique building materials. Uh, so I had lots of clients coming from all over the United States to buy antiques in the flea markets and in, in, in these great, what they call, off the tail of the trunk sales, which would be half day sales, professional set, uh, fairs. Uh, out in the middle of the boondocks, uh, there were lots of people who had warehouses that would sell in wholesale. Uh, so I would, we would drive them all over France, I would drive them in, I would negotiate for them and I would help them take care of the logistics of picking the goods up, having them created, shipped to the United States. But it was a great business, it was a, it was a flat, fabulous business uh, and very satisfying because I was out there in the middle of <clears throat> France going around traveling, in touch with art and architecture and, and enjoying France again. It was the arrival of digital photography uh, that got me back into taking more pictures and, and I found the pleasure, a great pleasure in taking pictures again, particularly when digital got to a certain level of quality whereby uh, you had good detailing in the darks and the lights and so it was, digital photography allows you to see your shots immediately, it's extraordinary because you can see what you've got immediately and you don't have to worry about sending it off to someone and you can take as many shots as you want so there's no financial constraint. You don't have to think about, oh, it's going to cost me so much if I take five shots, uh, you can take as many as you want. Not to say that you get better shots that way, but uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, best shot is often the first one you take. But still, you can't work the situation as freely when you have financial constraints in many respects. So digital photography has really liberated me to be as free and creative as possible. And uh, the fact that you can see the results like right away, that's extraordinary. You can take it home and work it on your computer, you don't have to send it to a lab, you don't have to pay somebody to do it for yourself, you do it yourself. So that, that the artist is taking control of his, his work in that respect. Uh, and what's nice about photography is that it's very complementary to painting. Uh, painting is, is more of a time-consuming, uh, reflective uh, process. Uh, photography is immediate, you know, you seize the image, you, you capture it, uh, and and the nice contrast as well is that painting, you, you generally have to stay put somewhere, or you can go out and paint outdoors or whatever, but you're stuck in one spot more or less. Um, photography, you move, you're going around, you're seeing things, you, you, you have uh, uh, activity, uh, so there's a nice contrast you can get out if you get tired of the painting, you can go take photographs, <laughs> come back take some painting. So um, they're very complementary and, and uh, I think they help each other if you don't become a slave to photography as a painter. Uh, many, today, many painters are uh, slaves to photo photography. They, they essentially just copy photographs. Uh, it's never been um, my interest. I always like to keep them separate. Uh, even if they are complementary, you know, uh, I would never think of just copying photographs as a painter. I put a lot of paintings aside and then I started my business 
and I got caught up in that, and so I never got back to these paintings. But I've been living with them for over 30 years, 35 years now, so uh, I can now know what I need to do to finish them. I've thought about them for a long time. I've seen them and lived with them, so uh, I think it'll be much easier to finish them now. The two older, uh, older children are 25 and 22, so they're close to being out of the nest, so to speak. They live with their, uh, my ex-wife, and um, the three younger children, who are four, six, and nine, uh, that's a good question, how do I manage it? It's, it's, it's not easy when you're in a certain age bracket to deal with young children, but uh, they are mine, and, and they are, it's, I'd say the most important creation of my life is having children. So uh, I, I cherish them more than anything else in the world. They are, they are the reason for, for being and the reason for uh, pushing forward and, and having new projects and making things happen. this old butcher shop in the town, which is, uh, was an abandoned building uh, facing the Loire River, and uh, it needed to be gutted and, and transformed, but we saw it had potential. Uh, we, over the last five years, we've made three furnished flats here, and the ground floor space, which is uh, where the butcher shop used to be, we've turned into the artist atelier, kind of a, a multi-purpose space. Um, because we are artist residency is in the winter. And uh, anyway, the idea was to create activity during the off season when the tourists aren't here, bring artists here for a minimum of one month to, to work along the banks of the Loire and be inspired by the nature and the beauty of the river. Uh, we've had writers and, and uh, painters and uh, other artists come. Um, we haven't had any musicians yet, but they're welcome as well. Uh, and. The idea, as I said, is to transmit the, the, what I, my appreciation for art and, and, and the beauty of this region to, to other people who come in and can get a taste of it. Okay. Doing more artwork, finishing the paintings I started many years ago, um, and helping other artists kind of develop their art here in, in the Loire Valley, the goal we're headed in now. So those, those, that's the future is, is in hand, so to speak. Mm -hmm.